Hello everybody and welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to review the sequel to the 2014 movie Kingsman The Secret Service and this movie is Kingsman The Golden Circle and it stars Taron Egerton, Colin Firth, Mark Strong, Channing Tatum, Julianne Moore, Pedro Pascal as well as a few others you will recognise too and Matthew Vaughan once again returns to direct and if I'm right in thinking this is the first sequel he has ever directed of any of his movies and this is a sequel I've been looking forward to um, the original one in 2014 was one of my favorite movies of the year um, it was very very well received and it was a bit of a surprise as well I don't think anybody expected the movie to be as good as it was and I think what the first movie did was remind everybody that spy movies um, should be fun should be an awful lot of fun um, and I think with the seriousness of the Bond movies over the last few movies, um, it was a breath of fresh air, the first Kingsman. So I have been looking forward to seeing this, despite um, some fairly lukewarm reviews. Um, and what we get in this movie is, at the beginning, at the beginning of this movie, it, we, it kicks off straight off with the breakneck paste, um, eggsy, has a battle with an old adversary um, throughout the streets of London and that essentially leads to the main bad guy Julian Moore's poppy who's the biggest drug dealer in the world we're led to believe gets the information of all the locations of all the Kingsmen um, hideouts throughout the world and she destroys them all with one fell swoop so they are left with no base and there's basically just Eggsy left and Merlin, Mark Strong's character. And they discover that there is a secret organisation in America called the Statesman. And they travel over there and they end up meeting up with Channing Tatum and Jeff Bridges and all the other Statesmen. And they decide to take out this new threat because Julian Moore's character, Poppe, um, the drug dealer, has hatched a plan where she has infected all her drugs and anybody that takes these drugs um, gets some kind of disease you see it in their face like blue veiny stuff and within a matter of days they're gonna die and she blackmails the world basically by saying um, legalize all drugs immediately or everyone's going to die and there's literally millions and millions gonna die um, if you legalize drugs I will release the antidote so that's the general gist of the story that we get here. Um, now, the mo this movie, um, I was a little bit worried was going to be the typical bloated sequel. Um, and at, when it started, we get an absolutely breakneck pace of a start. It's full on action for the first 10, 15 minutes, this movie. And it doesn't give you time to breathe. And I was a bit worried, even though it was fine to watch and it was an exciting action scene. I was like, oh no, it's not going to be like this all the way through, is it? I don't think I can, my eyes and brain can handle it. Um, and thankfully it wasn't. Um, there are moments to breathe in this movie. There are, There is a little bit of character development happening in this movie. Um, but there is an awful lot of action scenes in this movie too as well. Of course there is. There was in the first one. It'd be you know, a waste of time if there wasn't. So I was a little bit relieved to find out that there, there was a little bit of character building going on of some dialogue scenes in between the massive action set pieces. Um, I do think there are faults with this movie. Um, I, I think they kill off, I'm not going to say obviously, but they kill off a couple of characters that I didn't think was necessary. I don't think that it was earned um, and I thought it was a mistake. Now, in this series, it means nothing because, as we all know, Colin Firth comes back in this movie. And the explanation that they give, I guess, makes sense. You can write anything in movies these days and make it make sense, I suppose. But So we have Colin Firth back in this movie. Um, so there, there are things in this movie that work and there are some things that don't work in this movie. Like I say, some of the deaths, I think, are earned. I think the character Poppe that Julianne Moore plays well she does a fine job um, I didn't buy her and her um, sidekicks 
as the bad guys. It, they, put it this way, she's no Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, I thought his character in the first one and um, the character, was it Sophie Patella played, you know, with the blades on the legs. They were two brilliant, brilliant characters and they try and do something similar in this movie with Julianne Moore and her sidekick who's got like a robotic arm. They try something similar with those two but it just didn't work I don't think at all they weren't as fun or menacing as the first uh, Samuel Jackson and Sophia Patella in the first one so I don't really think that worked and also it wasn't very believable I mean are we meant to believe she's the only drug dealer in the world you know it kind of made out in the movie that you know she was the only drug dealer pretty much and all her drugs were tainted and everybody everybody took drugs in the world was infected with this disease that she'd put into all her drugs just the believability believability factor just completely went out of the window but to be fair this is almost like a comic book on screen now um, the level of realism the small level of realism that we got in the first one has gone completely now it is basically a comic book on screen but um, I enjoyed this movie better than I expected to but after re-watching the first one soon after watching this it really isn't comparable to the first one the first one is far far better than this but this is a decent sequel and I do think they've um, they've made a, a good action movie here so it is worth a watch <laughs>